Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. Your gates will always be open, by day or night, they will never be shut. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, Remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. of the one holy, living, and true God. Amen. It is a desperate plea, sometimes even existential. What am I to do? Other times it's more practical, but always urgent. A little blonde boy, 10 years old, dressed in khakis and a striped blue polo shirt, stands at the companionway to a giant jet bound for Tokyo. He is flying for the first time unaccompanied to visit his father there. Suddenly, frightened, he turns to his mother and asks, what am I supposed to do? Wishing she could simply take his hand and go with him, she guides him to the flight attendant and hugs him goodbye, turns to go. An old man, confused and uncertain because of dementia, looks to his wife after breakfast. What should I do now? She has no answer. What is he to do, given the diminishments that he endures? His, play is, his plea is poignant, often repeated. What should I do? And this past August, lying in a hospital bed in Maine, I too agonized. What am I to do now? I had taken a terrible fall off of a high dock ramp and fractured my pelvis in four places. I couldn't walk or barely even move, and I needed to take oxycodone every four hours for pain. Would I ever move normally, drive again, walk my dog? Would I ever stand in this pulpit? or at that altar. What was I to do? I remembered a prayer that I'd always loved from the prayer book. And so when dear David Griswold called me several days later in that hazy first few days, I asked him to read it. Here is that prayer. This is another day, O God. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. 
Amen. Amen indeed. David's voice and the words of the prayer calmed me, addressed my urgent questions about what next, what to do. Be brave and quiet and patient and gallant. Not strong suits of mine, to be sure, but comforting in the face of my hurting body and spirit. Those words prayed that day will always be with me. I could go on and on, story after story, about all the times when we don't know what to do, don't know what is required. It's such a human question. It arises always out of vulnerability and often fear. What are we to do? The examples I've given so far are about the question at a practical, individual level. They arise in particular life circumstances, and they include no direct reference to God. But the question can be much more sweeping. And so I turn now to the majestic passage from the prophet Micah in his famous words that perhaps address the question better than any others. It is these lines that ring out. With what shall I come before the Lord? He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Here the question becomes theological, a question and answer between us and God, not what others expect of us, not just what next practical steps we must take, but indeed how it is we are to live our lives, both as individuals and in community. Maybe these words seem too grand for the small, uncertain boy, or the old man facing an empty day, or my own very personal concerns about recovery. So let's move now to the grander scale of Micah's prophecy. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with your God. This passage really came alive for me back around the time when Bishop, the late Bishop Jane Holmes Dixon was bishop of this diocese pro tem. This passage was like a mantra for her, and she would often remind us of how often we confuse the first two commands. Jane would say, we love justice, but don't do it. We only do kindness when we feed the hungry and provide shelters. We love the idea of a just society, but fall, for, fall short of actually doing what it would take to end homelessness or hunger. Now, I am cheered by the several ways this community, St. Columbus, is taking seriously the actual doing of justice through the Washington Interfaith Network, our work to end family homelessness, the ways we are addressing structural sin, the great turnout here this morning for the forum with Matt Fruman representing Ward 3. This work must go alongside the many ways we do kindness, the water ministry, diaper drive, refugee families, all the ways that we do show kindness to others. Do justice, love kindness, not love justice and do only kindness. But it's not really either or, is it? It's not do one and love the other, but do and love both. And again, we can reflect on this at the personal level, the realm of our daily lives, as well as the grand sweep of society and our world. At the personal level, parents know well about both doing and loving justice and doing and loving kindness. We need to hold our kids to account and to instill in them a sense of justice and fairness and we need to love them unconditionally. At the societal level, we need to treat prisoners and refugees and even criminals kindly, even as we figured out what is fair and just for all people. It's a double imperative. It's a fierce moral appeal. And speaking of a fierce moral appeal in connection with this question about what we are to do, what is required of us, a new book practically jumped off the shelf at me last summer. The title of this book is How to Be Perfect, The Correct Answer to Every Moral Question. <laughs> Catnip to me, an incipient perfectionist. Wow. It's by Michael Schur. And here's the thing. Schur is a comedian. He's young. He's a TV writer and producer. He worked on parks and recreation. This is not some graybeard teaching moral philosophy 101. 
In fact, there are parts of the book that are hysterical, so spot on about how, excuse me, about how much we want to be good people, how often we fail, but even so, how much it is worth it to try. Schur gives a brief overview of the major schools of ethics. He addresses increasingly tough moral questions with very specific examples, often quite funny. Even his chapter titles are funny, and they're quite lengthy. Here's one. We've done some good deeds and given a bunch of money to charity, and we're generally really nice and morally upstanding people. So can we take three of these free cheese samples from the free cheese sample plate at the supermarket, even though it clearly says one per customer? <laughs> you get the flavor. And as I read along, delightedly following Schur's questions and examples, I realized how slyly and gradually he convicts us. We never will be perfect. There aren't correct answers to every moral question. Maybe some, but never all. And regardless, we will never be able to always do the right thing. And here's where walking humbly with our God comes in. We can't, no matter how hard we try, always get it right. Sure encourages humility. He doesn't condemn our failures. He maintains that the effort to be good is worth it, and that trying again and again and again after failure is what is required. He knows we need to apologize when we wrong someone, and he acknowledges the role of forgiveness, saying that to offer or receive either one is a gift of grace. Here again, humility and the willingness to keep trying are more important than moral perfection. I return now to our scriptures and the original question addressed by Micah about what God requires of us. Doing and loving justice and kindness are, of course, hard in so many ways, and along with Michael Schur, we need to be aware of our limitations and thus our need for humility. But so what am I actually to specifically do? What is required of me, of us? I wondered if today's passage from Matthew's Gospel might offer an answer. It is the familiar Beatitudes, the series of blesseds that Jesus offers in his Sermon on the Mount. It is so often read, yet it always challenges me. In it, the blessed are almost all things that most of us don't want to be. Poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, the hungry, the persecuted, while other blesseds are things we find it really hard to be, merciful and pure in heart and peacemaking. And Matthew's Jesus doesn't give examples. He holds out this ideal of perfect blessedness and then tells us to rejoice and be glad because our reward will be in heaven. How can his words help us to do justice and love mercy? How can they help us to know what to do in at least a little more detail? And then last week from Courtney Hundley on our staff came a gift, an alternative set of Beatitudes, if you will. They are by Kate Bowler, who is a writer and professor of divinity at, at the Duke School of Divinity. And Bowler is talking about people who care for other people, particularly those who are ill. But I believe her words have a far wider application. Here are Bowler's Beatitudes. Blessed are the noticers, the ones who see the story in its fullness. Blessed are the attenders, the witness bearers, the story holders, the ones who tiptoe to the edge right alongside us knowing that the very act will break their heart in pieces too. Blessed are those who are amazed by a life lived in its fragility, brevity, and beauty. Blessed are the ones who stand close enough to say, Behold, this is their love. This is their dumb hobby. And these are the people they, these blesseds, loved through every hilarious failure. These are their bad habits and favorite songs. This is the marvel I get to know. Behold, this is not a problem to be solved, but a person to be loved. And how lucky are we? these people, these loveds, these blesseds.
these precious, precious days. Maybe Bowler's words do not do justice to the grand societal scale of the imperatives of justice and kindness that Micah lays out. Detailed answers to that question, what am I to do, and the underlying what does God require, are so various they can never be spelled out, not in the Bible, not in a contemporary humorous book, not in any one place. Perhaps sometimes the answers can only be found in the depths of our hearts, the places where love calls us to care in the best ways we know how. But I do hope these contemporary beatitudes can prompt us, can help each of us to respond to the question, what am I to do, in fruitful and faithful ways. Amen. We believe in one God, God, the Father, Father, the the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We We believe. Gracious, loving God, you know the needs of our hearts and invite us to hear your voice and follow you. Receive our prayers as we pray. God of grace, you love us and invite us to extend that love in friendship, generosity, and hospitality to all. Fill us with your grace that we may be a community of kindness and compassion. Guide our efforts as we strive to understand and dismantle the structures of racism in the church and the world. O God of light, God of peace, we ask you to guide all leaders in our nation, the church, and all the leaders throughout the world, that they will be instruments of justice and peace. Help us to walk in your light and invite others to share that light with us. O God of light, God of creation, you have woven our bodies in the depth of the earth. Look upon the needs of a suffering world and bless all humanity. 
Bless us with the abundance of your presence and your spirit, that we may reveal you to our families, friends, and neighbors. O God of light, good and holy God, you fashion our lives day by day in your spirit. Increase in us your vision that we may see your hand at work in our community. O God of light, we pray for all who are ill, especially Catherine, Anna Gardano, Ken DeSell, Bob Erskine, Jack, Rose, Lisa, Jack Ryan Conley and family, Shelley, John Montgomery, Chris Moore, Gail Glenn, Jenna, Roger and Sandy, Jan, Cecile, Bob, Wendell Below, Meredith and Cecilia Mangum, the people of Ukraine, and those we now name silently or aloud. O God of light, accept our prayers of thanksgiving, especially for Bishop Mary Ann and diocesan representatives who gathered in convention yesterday, those who serve in elected leadership at the local level, first responders, chaplains, and those who offer comfort and support in times of crisis. And those blessings we name now, either silently or aloud. God of light, we welcome into your beloved community those who have died. We pray especially for Gordon McKemmy, Marcella Keeler, Tom Perry, Tyre Nichols, and those we now name either silently or aloud. O oh God of light, gracious and loving God, we come before you with no gifts but ourselves. Accept and receive our lives, that we may be manifestations of your presence. Let the light of your Spirit shine within and among us, so we may share in the mystery of your purpose of blessing for all creation, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
It is a great joy to welcome you to St. Columbus Church today, a special joy to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us for the very first time. And if you are here for the first time, thank you for joining us. We're glad that you are here. We're glad that you're with us. Uh, please help us welcome you by taking a moment and fill out a welcome card. You can place that in the offering plate as your gift to us today. St. Columbus is a church on a mission to live God's love. And we are eager to support you and to support one another as we make this walk in our life with Christ. I commend to you opportunities that are announced in the connection sheet, the little bulletin there, and uh, lift up in particular the opportunity. Uh, it's not too late to join one of the sacred ground groups. Uh, those are small group gatherings with readings and films looking at issues of race and racism and racial justice in our own lives and in the church and in the world about us. I commend that to you. Also, uh, St. Columbus, we are hiring a new Director of Development and Stewardship who, as the title suggests, is going to oversee those aspects of our ministry. And you may know the person who we are seeking. So I invite you to uh, give that some thought and uh, spread the word about that. Uh, the announcement is uh, on our website. Uh, you can direct them to be in touch with me, um, and they can reach me or tell me, and I'll reach them, and um, we'll do this together. And let us now walk in love, as Christ has loved us and given himself for us a gift and sacrifice unto God.
God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. God of blessing, we thank you always for making us in your image to serve the peace of all creation. You shared your name with our mothers and fathers, Sarah and Abraham, who left their home and became a blessing to all nations, Moses and Miriam, who went through sea and wilderness to the place of revelation, Deborah and Samson, who gave hope and justice to a people ruled by fear, Ruth and Jonah, who went to foreign soil and found a God who loves the stranger. From our ancestors in faith came Jesus, the son of promise, to fulfill the law, embody your love, and draw all people to himself. He accepted death to break its fearful hold. He was raised to life to share it in abundance. He comes again to break the bread and pour the wine of hope. Therefore, with all people whose story you have shaped, with women and men of faith in every part of the world, we glory in your generous love and sing in praise of you. ask that your Holy Spirit will fall upon us and upon these gifts, that these fragile earthly things may be to us the body and blood of our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed, gathered with his faltering friends for a meal that tasted of hope. Calling them to his table, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. As on that night, so here and now, Jesus offers all that he was, all that he is, and all that he will be. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is so Therefore, we come in memory and hope, responding to your call and the promise that echoes from the dawn of all time. May mind and heart be held by your self-giving love as we stand before the cross, approach the empty tomb, and praise the one whose name is lifted high above all earthly power. Receive our broken offering through your never-ending grace and bind us in communion with all who share your gifts through Almighty God, in whom from the beginning of time and through the great expanse of space all things are drawn into the ceaseless love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome at Christ's table.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you are May Christ's bright star enlighten your mind and heart as you strive for equality, for justice, and for kindness in the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always.
filled with the light of Christ, let us go forth to live God's love. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you. Thank you.